everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this stash busting blanket. Uh, now this is a great crochet blanket with excellent texture and it is a great way to use up your yarn if you say have a lot of acrylic yarn uh, lying around in a medium or worsted weight. This blanket will be perfect for you. The blanket is super heavy when finished. I have my sample one here that I'll show you just a little bit of, but you can see it here. Uh, it's made with this beautiful front and back post uh, texture and uh, uh, made up of about 120 of these little squares. So you can use a variety of colors and my sample one here in the photo you can see I used a number of colors in mine um, or you can make it all in one color. It's really up to you. For the one that I have here I have used 32 balls of the Wander Acrylic Yarn by uh, Furls Fiber Arts and uh, there's about 120 yards per ball. It's a 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn. So if you're going to use a different yarn, you're going to need about 3,840 yards in total to make the blanket. I'm also going to be using a 5 millimeter or an H8 crochet hook. Links to these items can be found in the description of this video. On my website, richtexturescrochet.com, you'll find a number of other photos of the finished blanket there for you, as well as a copy of the free written instructions. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, while you're here, I invite you to take a look around. Feel free to subscribe. This channel is updated every week with new free crochet patterns and crochet stitch tutorials. For our blanket today, we're going to start uh, by working our first motif, our first square, and I worked 120 of these squares. Each of my squares measured approximately 5 by 5 inches for a blanket that was approximately 50 by 60 inches when finished. So what you're going to do for your square, you're going to make a slip knot and then work a foundation chain. Your foundation chain will need to be uh, 24 chains. And 24. Once you have your 24 chains worked, you're going to begin row 1 by working a double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook and then double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Your chain 3 at the start of this row does count as a double crochet stitch. Once you come across at the end of row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row two, and this is the repeat row that you'll repeat for the rest of the square, you're going to begin by working a half double crochet into your first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. Next, you're going to work a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. To work a front post double crochet, you're going to yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook from the front through to the back and around the post and out through the front again. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. To work your back post double crochet, yarn over, Bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from the back through to the front, around the post and out through the back again of the next stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to repeat that all the way across until you have one stitch remaining. Front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. 
all the way across until one stitch, which was your turning chain, remains. At the end of row two, you're going to work a half double crochet into that final stitch, which is the top of your starting chain. Chain one and turn your work. You're now simply going to repeat row two for rows three, two, all the way through to 11. So half double crochet into that first stitch, followed by a front post double crochet, and then back post double crochet all the way across, working a half double crochet in your final stitch. So this is for rows 3 through to 11. At the end of row 11, you should have a square. If your motif is not perfectly square, if it's either too long or too short, you can add or subtract rows as needed. But you'll want your motif to be a fairly even square by the time you're done. At that time, you can meet me back here at the end of row 11. At the end of row 11, once you have worked your square, you're going to work just a simple edging all the way around. So I chained one and then turned my work. You're then going to simply work a single crochet all the way across, working one single crochet into each stitch. So all the way across the top of your square. When you come all the way across the top, you're going to work one more single crochet into your corner stitch and turn your work so that you're working along this unfinished edge. You're then going to work 22 single crochet stitches all the way across, starting in that first corner stitch. You're going to just simply make sure that you're kind of evenly uh, spacing those stitches out all the way across your square, but you'll want to work 22. When you come to your next corner, once again work one more in your corner, work all the way across the bottom, one in the corner, all the way up the side, and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At that time you can then fasten off, weave in your ends, and then continue making your squares. Again, to make the size of blanket that I have, you're going to work a total of 120 squares. Don't be afraid to mix and match colors um, with that kind of thing. Uh, and then meet me back here and we're going to join all of our squares together. Now once you have worked your 20, 120 squares, they're 5 by 5 inches, uh, you're then going to join your squares together. Uh, depending on how many colors in that you've chosen may affect where you place your squares. I like to alternate them so I had one where the rows were vertical, one where the rows were horizontal and do that all throughout. It's really up to you as far as the placement is concerned for these squares. But then you're going to come to want to join them together. So after you've laid all of your squares out and you know where they're going to go, you're going to take your yarn, and I'm just going to use this pink, which contrasts a little bit, but it does show up a little bit better here on the camera. And you're going to uh, insert your hook through the front loops only of each motif. So in the front loop only of the first one, and then reach across front loop only of the second one, and just join with a slip stitch. You can then chain one. Now for this blanket, I used a single crochet join, which created a thick ridge of texture on the one side, and then on the other side, there was no texture. So the blanket looked great on both sides. So what you're going to do for this single crochet join is working in the front loops only of each stitch, through both thicknesses all the way across, you're going to work single crochet stitches. So into this first stitch, 
single crochet then over to your next one front loop only on the one side front loop only on the other side and single crochet you're going to do this all the way across when you come to the end of your square you're simply going to make a little jump pull the stitch a little bit tighter and continue working up the row working single crochets in the front loops only all the way across you're going to do this until every square is joined both vertical and horizontally and uh, then you'll be all set to work the edging all the way around once you've joined all of your squares together this is what it looks like on the front on my original one I used a gray color uh, and then this is it on the back so once you've joined them all together in rows you're then ready to begin a simple edging around your blanket uh, I worked mine in two colors so a different color for each row one and two it's really up to you but you're going to take your yarn join with a slip stitch into that first stitch or into any stitch around on the edge of your blanket and then chain one for round one we're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around when you come to your corner stitch uh, you're going to work three stitches into that corner stitch before you continue along the other side but just for this first row we're just working half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way across now I'll show you what I did when I come to my square join here when I come to the seam I'll just show you what I like to do when I come across to it when you come to that seam you're going to want to make sure that you connect the seam to your upper edge especially if you're using a contrasting color so I actually inserted my hook through the top of the first stitch of the seam and then down into the blanket before yarning over and drawing up a loop through the blanket and the seam and then finishing off that half double crochet that's going to connect the edging of your blanket to your seam and then you're just going to continue on working half double crochets all the way around when you come again to this corner stitch over here work three in the corner and then continue around when you come to your first stitch you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end of round one you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch do not turn your work we're going to continue working in the same direction and for round two your final round you're simply going to chain one and work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around now I did mention before if you would like if you have another color left over you're welcome to switch up the colors uh, it's really whatever you have on hand so you're simply going to work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around once again into your corner stitches you're going to work three single crochets into that corner and then continue all the way across when you come back to your first stitch you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch and that brings you to the end of your stash busting 
blanket. You can then weave in any ends, block the blanket if desired. Other than that, you can simply enjoy it. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time for another great free crochet pattern. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.